Who is innovating in higher education right now, and what are they learning from this innovation? Not enough people are innovating enough in higher education. <laughs> you know, the place to start is General Electric looks nothing like it looked in 1975. Harvard or Yale or Princeton or Stanford uh, look a lot like they looked in 1975. They're about the same size to within a factor of two. They're about the same number of buildings. They operate on about the same calendar. They have many of the same people, or some number of the same people, in uh, significant uh, positions. So I think the main thing to say is that for something that's all about ideas, and for something that's all about young people, the pace of innovation in higher education is stunningly slow. We're still on a system where the break is in the summer. And the reason we're on that system is that when everybody went to pick the plants, that was the natural way to organize school, and it's still going uh, that way. You know, I think the action in the potential action in higher education is probably heavily through distance learning and artificial intelligence and learning technologies of uh, various kinds. Because if you think about it, the unique capacity that uh, online education has is that on the one hand, there are huge economies of scale. Once the lecture's filmed, 100,000 people can watch it at the same cost as 100 people watching it. And on the other hand, you can have much more personalization. You can re-listen to the bit you didn't understand. You can insert diagnostic questions and have a different lecture for people depending on how they do on the diagnostic questions. So it permits what's usually very rare, which is more differentiation and more economies of scale. But I would say, to date, it hasn't yet been pursued on a scale and with a degree of energy that um, is commensurate uh, with, uh, the ch with, the, with the real challenge. You know, a number of universities have made what Clay Christensen would say is the first elementary error. They said that their uh, MOOC efforts or their distance learning efforts are going to all be designed to be complementary of better education on their campuses. Well, that's a certain logic to that in terms of faculty politics and in terms of faculty comfort and all of that. But the essence of Clay Christensen's lessons about disruptive innovation is if you want to do something all new, you have to separate it from the original mission, not judge it by the standards of the original product, and let it be separate. And what I've been struck by in the distance education efforts is that they tend to be very much within paradigm and not set up uh, in uh, separate ways. So I think, there's, I think the main thing to say about innovation in higher education is that there's much too uh, little of it.